everyone. I have got a little quick get ready with me, um, a little chit chat. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. Well, I have got some errands that I've got to run today. And um, so I thought that I was going to, well, I'm just going to sit down here and put on some uh, makeup. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and turn on the computer and uh, start up the camera. So let's see here. Um, what I'm going to do is I've already got a bunch of my makeup already set out here. So I will... Um, probably just do a little chit chat, a little get ready with me, but I'll list everything down below for you all, either that or I'll do a like a little recap at the end. So anyway, um, what has been going on? Oh, first I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, um, all of the wonderful feedback that I had, um, you know, on the horse race video. That is just so much fun. I absolutely, you know, love going to the horse races. Obviously, you know, animals are a very huge part of my life um but yeah that was and i i will be definitely going back you know <laughs> again so if y'all want me to take you with me again um yeah i'll do that so it is it is a lot of fun but um yeah so i did want to thank you about that and um let's see here what else has been going on well the other day my one little dog boudreaux I don't know what has gotten, I don't know if it's just like the, some, something with the, the weather changing or whatever, um, but it was like a couple of my dogs, my oldest German Shepherd, Noah, and Boudreaux, they were just like, yeah, I didn't really want to eat that, you know, but they weren't like sick. I mean, nobody was throwing up or had diarrhea or anything like that, and uh, so I was trying to get them to eat, so I was changing up their food a little bit, trying to, you know, boiled chicken. I was making them scrambled eggs. I mean, so, you know, they would eat, but they would be like picking at their stuff. Well, you know, Noah finally came around. I don't know, but, um, Boudreaux, I woke up the other morning and in my spare bathroom, it was like he had a blowout at both ends. I mean, the, it was such a huge, huge mess. So, Anyway, I knew that, you know, obviously Boudreaux had an issue going on other than just being picky. Um, so I went ahead and gathered him up and took him into the vet. And um, they did blood work on him and everything. And all of the blood work came back really good. So um, the vet just said that, you know, he had just a little tummy, tummy upset. So um, I've got him on. All right, so hang on. All right, isn't that usually the way it goes? You know, everything's all quiet, and, you know, you think, okay, I've got just a few minutes to sit down, do some makeup, and then the phone starts ringing. Okay, so Boudreaux. Anyway, uh, he's on some uh, antibi antibiotics and uh, some anti-nausea medicine, so he is doing much better. Um, I was actually, uh, when I was in there the other day at the vet's office, and I was, you know, gave me a few minutes, you know, kind of sit and, um, catch up on some of my comments, replying back to my comments. And, um, so I was replying back to Miss Jan. Hi, Jan. And, uh, so I was telling her, you know, that Boudreaux was, I was at the vet's office and he was not feeling good. So anyway, you know, you just kind of take advantage of some little downtime. <laughs> so I was doing, so then they're waiting on that blood work and responding back to my comments and stuff. But he is doing really good, um, but anyway, so yes, um, maybe just a little part of um, something that y'all might not know about me that I will share with you. I used to be a vet tech. So um, anyway, I loved doing that for the years that I did. Um, the doctors, they were a married couple that I worked for. And um, oh my word, they were so good. I mean, so good. And um so yeah, I did that for several years and I just, I loved it. I did. And I think that, you know, I mean, I've always been brought up around animals, always loved animals. Um, so, I mean, it just, you know, was like no surprise that, you know, that I would probably have a lot of animals, you know, as I got older or, you know, go into some type of work with animals. Um, but I could tell you that, um, wow, working for a vet, and, you know, I mean, it's not, some days it's hard. It is really hard, you know, to be there, um, you know, because you, 
you get to, you know, see the dogs and, you know, that people bring in that they're puppies and then, um, you know, you kind of get to know them and then, you know, that their little babies get sick and then they have to bring them in, you know, and, um, you know, you just, there's just some people, you know, that you just kind of get attached to and just kind of have, you know, a, a, a friendship bond with them. And, uh, the vet that I worked for, the, the man, he was also a master falconer. And so he did, um, he was licensed to have the peregrine, peregrine falcons and all of the birds of prey. And so, um, with him being a vet, uh, he did one, he was at the time he was like one of three people in the United States that did artificial insemination of the peregrine falcons, which was so cool. Um, so, uh, what, you know, he would get the eggs and everything. And, um, when, um, let's see what I'm trying to, it's kind of hard for me to do this and <laughs> chit chat and know what I'm doing. It's hard to tell what this makeup's going to look like. But, um, anyway, he, uh, would artificially inseminate the birds and then, um, when the eggs, he would hatch out the eggs and, um, depending on if they were going to be, uh, human imprinted or not, depend on how he would feed them or, you know, he would always bring the babies in and they looked like, I mean, they would be about this tall and they looked like fluffy cotton balls. I mean, just a fluff ball of cotton with this little black beak and these little black eyes. And so if he wanted them to be human imprinted, then we fed them with our fingers, with our hands. But if he did not want them to be human imprinted, then there was like this little puppet and it had a little pair of tweezers inside the little beak. So it looked like a, a head of a, of a, of a bird. Are you, I'm not believing this. Hang on y'all. Darn phone. It caused me to lose some, some footage. So, um, anyway, we were talking about the birds of prey and, um, you know, feeding them. So it was just so neat, you know, to have something like that. And, uh, they were so cute to, you know, hand feed. They were adorable. And that was just, you know, that was so much fun. Anyway, he, um, and his wife, let's see here. She, uh, she was amazing, amazing doctor as well. Um, she, there was a, a chicken that had broke its leg and so she had, uh, did surgery on this little chicken and it had little pins in its leg. She saved that little chicken. She loved that little chicken. It was one of the, it's called a little silky. It was white and real fluffy. So anyway, she loved that little chicken. So yeah, she saved its little life. And, um, I don't know. There was just so much fun. And he did, um, he did the Falcons. Um, he did, um, Let's see here, lots of, um, lots of reptiles. There was snakes, which that was never my, my cup of tea, you know, was the, no, I did not like the snakes and the, um, a lot of the, um, reptiles like, um, you know, the bearded dragons and chameleons and stuff like that. So he just did a little bit of everything. He was so, so good. And, uh, he did the big cats like the mountain lions and the tigers and stuff. And, um, there was a, um, you know, they would bring them in as well, which they were just beautiful. I mean, beautiful. And, um, there was, um, a little guy that they brought in. I have a, I have a picture of him. Hang on. All right. So there was a, um, a little, isn't he adorable? I have a little picture of him. This was so, so many years ago. But his name was Taz, and uh, he got brought in and um, to get uh, declawed. And um, you know, a lot of people think it's a great idea to have these animals. Um, they have, they're wild. Um, you know, I have I have mixed emotions on subjects like that. But anyway, so in case you do have the big cats, you know, I mean, I'm just gonna keep my opinion to myself. But um, anyway, so he had to stay with us for several days and uh, while he was, you know, getting declawed. And um, 
the doctor had to, um, after, you know, they removed his claws, he had to put these big pressure bandage wraps on him, you know, to um, have his little feet heal up and really good and everything. And so he looked like a little boxer, you know, with these big, huge little things on his feet. And so during the day, you know, like we would close the office um, for, for lunchtime, and that's usually when, you know, all the surgeries would go on. And then, you know, at nighttime, um, you know, after closing time, I would go and get him out of his cage. And I had a tennis ball, and there was a long hallway, and I would throw that tennis ball down the hallway. And he would just bounce down that hallway, <laughs> go get that tennis ball and bring it back to me. And he always came back, and he would jump up on me, and he would put each one of his feet, his paws, you know, on my shoulders. And I would stand up, and he would just, like, hold, you know, just dangle for me. He was just so cute. Um, yeah, his name was Taz. He was so cute. But, um, let's see, what else? You know, you, you see a lot of, you know, good and bad. You know, there's so much... Um, you know, when animals, people bring their animals in and, you know, it's time to say goodbye to them. Oh, that's hard. It's so hard. Um, you know, I mean, you just, it's, that was never, ever, you know, a fun part of that job. And, you know, the vets, they, you know, they, they get attached to these animals as well. But, um. I did assist in so many, many surgeries, and um, I think that my favorite surgeries were um, the, uh, oh, God, I have such a brain fart, the emergency C-sections, yes, emergency C-sections, and so that was just so, you know, I mean, it's not a good surgery, you know, because, I mean, it's it's very risky, you know, and you could lose puppies, lose the mama and everything. But when one of those surgeries was taking place, um, you know, it was kind of like all hands on deck back there in that, in that operating room. And um, the doctor would, you know, be taking the puppies out, you know, and handing the puppies over to one of us technicians. And it was our job to, you know, stimulate them and to, you know, try and get them to breathe, you know, because they are, they're lifeless. I mean, they are lifeless when they come out of the mama, you know, because she's under anesthesia, under anesthesia, which now means that they are under anesthesia. And so, um, you know, just taking them out and getting them to breathe. Um, why does this look so, my lights, I've got to figure out my lights in here. I don't know what has gone wrong with my camera or my lights, but I almost look like a little clown sitting here. But I'm looking in here in my mirror, and it's not that that dark, but on my camera it is. Okay, this is bothering me. i got to tweak my lights here or something. Hang on. I just don't know why. It just seems so dark in here today. I mean, it's dark outside, but okay, we'll just get through this. Um, what was I saying? Mmm. Okay, so the emergency C emergency C sections. So that was just so you know that was just so neat to be able you know to do that and you know you've got this little life you know that you're responsible for and you know waking it up basically. Um, so I loved it. I love 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 that. Okay, but you know on the downside of this, you know working for a, a vet. Um, you get lots of phone calls from friends and family members and, you know, they want you to come over and take a look at, you know, Lucky or whoever, you know, because he's got a problem and, you know, they send you pictures and you're like, what do you think? And so, you know, it's like, I'm not a vet. I am not a vet, you know, but they're like, oh, I'm sure you've seen this, um, you know, so... Anyway, I'm like, well, I've got an idea, but, you know, you, you do need to go ahead and go to the vet and get, you know, get it taken care of. But anyway, so that was a, always a downside. Um, you know, it was always a good situation, you know, um, and I'll probably say this and something will go wrong. But um, the weird thing is, is that, um, you know, like through the years with my animals, um, whenever things have gone wrong, you know, it has helped me or, you know, put me in an emergency situation with a friend 
um, yeah, you know, it is good because, yeah, I do, I can act pretty quick, you know, and know, know basically what to do. But, um, yeah, sometimes it can definitely just kind of backfire on you, though. Um, my, and for instance, for instance, um, I need to, uh, show you all, so, because I always mention, uh, my little bestie, Candace. Um, I need to go grab a picture of her so that you all can put, you know, a face to a name. She hates, I mean hates to get her picture taken. She will not, she does not like pictures. This is the only picture I have of me and Candace together. All right, so there she is. Finally, y'all can see her. So whenever I talk about Candace, that's who I talk about. And um, I probably need to just do a video on... Oh, my word, I mean, it would be like part one, two, ten, twenty, or whatever of uh, stories with me and Candace. But, um, oh, good night. She would always get me in situations. We were down at our property one time, and um, the guy had put a bunch of goats on there. And there was a baby, it was a baby goat. And I don't want to go into all the details on it because if you've got a squeamish stomach, I certainly don't want to gross you out here. But this little baby goat was in a really, I mean, yeah, he needed, he needed some medical attention desperately, pretty bad. And um, so it was on a Saturday and there were no vets, you know, open. And, um, you know, we were out in the country at the place where we were out on the property that we had and um so anyway I was Candace was like you can fix it you can fix it I know you can and I'm like Candace I don't know you know I'll, you know you just know honey I can't there's nothing I can do and so she started crying she says you can fix it I know you can um if you don't help it, it's going to die. I was like, oh, come on, Candace. Don't pull that card on me, you know. She says, no, you can fix it. And uh, and anyway, she just would not take no for an answer. And so we loaded up this little baby goat and um, took it back to the house where we were there. Still there in the country. And um, so she is wanting me to perform surgery on this goat. And I'm trying to make her understand that, I'm trying to make her understand, you know, that I don't have all of the tools that I needed, you know, and everything in sedation. So, make a long story short, um, I ended up, you know, because I have horses and I had the horses down there with me and I always, you know, pack medical stuff for the horses. You know, I have a sedation that I do use for them for different things. And so I was like, this is all that I've got. And she's like, you can give it to the goat. <laughs> I'm like, Candace, this is for the horses, you know. So anyway, I was trying to calculate, you know, on the bottle. It says how much, you know, to give to a horse, you know, per how many pounds or and everything. But I'm like, okay, this is not good because I know that, you know, different animal, animals metabolize differently. So anyway, I just started off with the most tiniest, tiniest little dose of um, sedation for this little goat and um, so she was um, I started working on it and um, she, I mean she guilted me into this and then I started you know doing everything and you know I just had a makeshift of stuff that I had sterilized and um, so I started it on this thing and she's like she goes do you know what you're doing <laughs> are you kidding me what are you, what? You right now want to ask me, do I know what I'm doing? And uh, she goes, you're not going to hurt it, are you? And I was like, oh my gosh, Candace. And she goes like, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, it'll be all right. And um, so anyway, I finished up its little surgery. And um, she's like, okay, wake it up now. And I'm like, Candace, it's going to have to wake up on its own. You know, I, I don't have the stuff to wake it up with. And... Um, because, you know, there, there are drugs that you can reverse, you know, and wake an animal up. But I did not have that with me. And um, 
so she uh, she says okay now what and I was like well now we just have to wait for it to wake up you know and I, I don't know how long that's gonna be so we're just gonna have to watch it so you know she I was like okay go put it in the horse trailer in the tack room in the horse trailer you know because it's nice and quiet and it was you know a little there was a little window in there you know so I didn't want a bunch of light and um, just wanted it to you know rest and recover and everything she goes and puts it on the horse trailer. Well, this is in like the afternoon when I did this surgery on this goat. So that evening, I mean, she kept going out. She's like, it's not awake yet. It's not awake yet. And so I got there and checked it, you know, and it was still breathing and doing good. And um, so <laughs> later that night, it's not waking up. You know, it's just not waking up. And I was like, Candace, I don't know. You know, I don't know how much, you know, I should have really given it. I, I kept on the low side, you know. And so she went out in the middle of the night and checked on it. It still hadn't woke up. And so the next morning, she runs out there and she comes in and she says, It's alive! It's alive! And I'm like, Yay! So we, um, it was the following day, we were going to be going back home. And one of the vets in town uh, was coming to the barn. So anyway, um, I said, you know, we, we need to get some antibiotics, you know, in this little thing as soon as possible. And uh, so anyway, she goes, well, Dr. So-and-so is going to be at the, at the barn tomorrow. And I was like, perfect. And so as soon as Doc walks in, you know, he sees this little goat and he's all bandaged up. And she, he's like, what in the world happened to him? And, um, Candace is like, Marsha did surgery on him. Oh my she goes, she did. She saved his life. And, um, so she said, uh, we need some penicillin for him, you know. And the doc's looking at me because you did surgery. What did you do? That's just do not like it when you go playing, you know, when you go doing their job. They do not like that a bit, you know. And so I was so mad at Candace. I was like, I can't believe you just threw me under the bus like that, you know. And so he's like, well, do you want me to take a look at it? And, you know, Candace is like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and take a look. So Ian did all of the bandages. And uh, he looked and he goes, you did a really good job. And I was like, thank you. Yes. All right. So now the little goat is on the road to recovery. And, um, so yeah, a little goat, he, he is alive and, um, but anyway, yeah, so I love animals and I'm being a vet tech. I mean, you know, sometimes it just kind of backfired on me, but you know, and sometimes, um, people would bring animals in and there was this one lady, oh man, I just really wanted to choke her so badly, but you can't, you know, you can't, you can't say anything. Um, there was this little dog that she brought in. It was like a little Scotty, little black Scotty dog. And um, that little thing, oh my word, he had like, he stunk so bad. And he had like open sores on him. And, uh, you know, you always go, how long has this been going on or whatever, you know? Well, she said that she had just noticed it like a couple days ago. And I'm like, how, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way. There is no way that she just noticed this a couple days because, I mean, these are, this dog is stinky. And he, I mean, he's definitely got some open sores all over him, you know. And um, so, anyway, come to find out, he had um, cancer so bad that was eating him from the inside, working its way out. How do you not, how do you not know that, you know? If you're around your dog and you take care of your dog. Um, yeah, so there was so many times, you know, where you just really had to, you know, bite your tongue and just nod your head and okay, okay. But boy, I'll tell you what, sometimes I just wanted to beat the crap out of people. You know, really, really and truly, I just wanted to beat the crap out of them. Oops, I'm putting my stuff away instead of putting it over here in the pile to let y'all know what I'm using here. All right, not much else really going on today. I need to go to the post office. Um, I have a, uh, where the, uh, flies, I, I give my horses, it's, it's a, called a feed through fly 
thing so that it definitely does cut down the flies. That's the only thing I hate. Having livestock, you know, they do bring in some flies. So, and I don't like my horses having flies on them. So I give them this stuff and it kind of um, keeps the flies at bay, which is so good. And I ordered um, a pair of clippers um, the other day for Big Jake. Um, I've got to body clip him. You know, we're starting to get into the 80s now. And uh, he just does not shed his fur like he needs to. He likes to hang on to that big woolly coat, which is not going to work out for him. Because, you know, he cannot sweat. I'm for sure that, you know, I've said this before. He's got that little disease called anhydrosis. So he starts out sweating and then his like body shuts down and says, no, I'm not going to sweat anymore. So I have to keep him um, babied quite a bit. I have a big, huge, one of the big, huge porta coolers down there in uh, one of their pastures. And then I've also got a big, huge fan um, and I have a misting system around this. So um, I'll take you all down there sometime and let you see, you know, big Jake sitting in front of his portico are taking a nap in the afternoon you know I mean the other horses they're like yes we're so thankful that Big Jake has health issues because they get the benefits of it as well you know I mean who does that who does that you know me but that's okay I love that boy he's just such a good boy so he's going to get a haircut soon maybe I'll video for that for y'all it's a job and I have to wear you know little like goggles because the hair starts flying and it ends up getting in my eyes and it's just you know because he's just so big and then I have to stand on a little on a stepladder thing you know to shave his back and um, you know high up around on his neck and everything but he doesn't mind he stands just perfectly still he's such a good boy he's very used to it every year and there's been a couple times you know a couple summers where I ended up having to you know shave him a couple times during the year because it just gets so hot I mean it just gets hot all right let's do just a little oh hey I ordered this new stuff in fact it's gonna be at the post office when I pick it up for my lips and there was this big uh, thing that I saw actually on Instagram about it and it is called City, oh, what's it called? City Beauty or something like that. And uh, it I had a good video that went with it, you know, about, you know, the lip plumpers and everything and how, you know, I mean, they were showing some pictures where it was like there was like burns on the, the gal's lips um, from the, you know, the chemicals that they used to try and get that lip plumping effect, you know, where it kind of like... Um, you know, it just kind of like, I don't know, it just kind of causes trauma to your lips so that your lips will swell. But um, a couple of them, I mean, she had, they, a couple of them did have some really good burns. And there was just like red places, you know, where the lip plumper had backfired on them or they'd used it too much or something. But anyway, it's supposed to be really good without all of the harsh chemicals, so... Little Miss Skillet Lips here. I'm going to give it a try. And I'm also, I mean, truthfully, I am looking. I'm going to be going to the dermatologist here in a couple weeks. And I'm definitely going to talk to her about, um, you know, getting possibly some lip injections. Yeah. To help with these lines. Yeah. Some fillers. I'm not going to go crazy because... You know, I look at some of these gals and and I wonder, I just wonder this. This is just my own personal, you know, kind of wondering. So if you go stretching that skin out, you know, and then, you know, you don't want puffy lips anymore or you get older, you know. I mean, what happens when all of that filler wears off? Are you going to look like a raisin, you know, sitting there with prunes on your lips. These are things that I think about when I go, you know, thinking, do I really want my lips filled? Because what's going to happen when you go stretching that skin out, 
because you know is it is it going to go back to where it normally was or is it going to you know because i don't want a couple prunes sitting on my lips i don't think that would be very attractive at all okay y'all i'm going to go fix my hair and i'll be right back all right so this is the final little look that i came up with um just a casual little t-shirt you know i uh, put my hair up in my little quickie quickie bun thing that i love to do um, yeah, so I kind of like these little, you know, get ready's with me, um, you know, just kind of like a little chit chat. I think it allows you all to kind of get to know me a little bit better and, you know, some, come, some of the little, you know, stories that I have, um, you know, can share about my life. So anyway, yes. All right. So that's all I've got. Um, I appreciate you all so very much for hanging out with me. And as always, I wish you all a safe and wonderful day. Bye. For primer today, I use the Mali Perfect Prep Primer Glow. For foundation, I use two pumps of the Clay de Peau and one pump of the Tom Ford Shimmer Shop mixed together. For my concealer today, on the inside corners of my eyes, I use the MAC Prep and Prime in Radiant Rose. The other concealer that I used is by Terry Terribly Densilis. To set underneath my eyes and my foundation, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. For just a little bit of a radiance powder, I use the Guerlain Meteorites in the 3 Medium. For my bronzer, I use the Guerlain Meteorites in the 4 Dore. Now for my highlighter, I went in with a product from MAC, and this is from the Robert Lee Morris Collection. This is actually listed as it was supposed to be a blush, and the shade is called Peach. But the shade is so incredibly light, I like to use it as a highlighter. Now for blush, I use the Guerlain, and this is the Meteorite's Happy Glow Blush. To prime my eyes for my eyeshadow, I use the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. To set the primer, I went in with the Becca. Uh, this is the Ombre Rouge, and I used the top shade right up here to set it. My eyeshadows today are from the Natasha Denona, and this is the 5 Pan Number 8. The colors that I chose out of this are on my eyelids up into the crease was this shade right here. And then to deepen up that crease a little bit, I used a combination of this shade, these two darker shades. For my eyebrows, it's going to be a combination of the Wet n Wild Color Icon Eyebrow Pencil and a little bit of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. Bottom lashes are the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash. Top lashes are the Josie Marin Black Oil. For lipstick today, I chose MAC Frosty Bombshell. To set everything, I used the Algenis Splash.